far. Here is FBU Tilliman Maraming salamat. Alam nyo ba, guys, kung bakit ako excited? Oh, bakit? bakit? Dahil ito ang pinakuunang episode natin for season 2! Oh, season 2 yes! na season ba? Two na. Ha? Season 2 na pala eh! Grabe! Kaya maraming maraming, maraming salamat, salamat! Mga schoolmates, thank you sa support ha! Ayan! At alam ninyo, oh. JB, Hesa, ang pinaka nag-enjoy sa atin ay si JB. Bakit ako? Alam nyo ba kung bakit? 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 Aba, eh, nag-tour yan kahapon dito sa skwelahan. Ay, oo. Oh, oh. Kaya naman na ah, panuuri natin. Kamusta yung tour mo? Okay naman, pero may tawag kasi dito eh. Oo. Oh. School tour. Is school tour. School tour ni oh. JV Cruz. So, eto na. Panuuri na natin <laughs> ang JV's school tour. Bilang isa sa mga non-stop, non-profit, educational institution ng FEU Group, ang FEU Diliman ay originally named after FEU's first president and founder, Nicanor Reyes Sr. Siguro nagtataka rin kayo kung bakit pabaliktad si Dulat at binabasa ang acronym noon ng FEU Diliman, which is FEU Fern. Well, simple lang ang sagot dyan. It is solely for the purpose of avoiding confusion sa isa pang facility owned by the FEU Group, ang FEU Nicanor Reyes Medical Foundation. Pero alam mo ba kaya, JV, na ang branch na ito ay officially binuksan ng 1994 para sa mga estudyante. It is also located in a 10-hectare property dito sa Mapayapa Village, Barangay Pasong Tamo, Quezon City. At kung inyo na rin napansin, isa sa mga bagay na kilala ang F.E. Diliman ay ang kanilang park-like slash nature-loving scenery na talaga namang napaka-ideal sa mga estudyante na gustong-gustong mag-aral sa isang calm and peaceful surrounding. Pero hindi lang for academic excellence ang dahilan kung bakit napaka-nature-friendly ng atmosphere dito sa FEU Diliman. Kilala rin ang university na ito bilang isa sa mga host ng ilan sa mga malakihang sporting events ng bansa. Yeah! Ito'y dahil na rin sa napakaganda nilang artificial football pitch na ginagamit na venue ng mga football games ng UAT. Yeah! Yeah! Kasali dyan, syempre, yung napakaganda nilang FIBA-approved gymnasium na balita ako ay pinagpapractice ng down ng ating national team. Maliban pa dyan, dahil na rin sa kanilang dynamic approach to achieve excellence, FEU Diliman provides intervention programs na talaga namang tutulong sa development ng mga estudyante. In connection to this, FEU Diliman's core curriculum strives to produce competent professionals specifically on the fields of accountancy, business, and IT. At dahil sa kanilang strong linkages sa iba't ibang mga BPO's and business enterprises, natutulungan din nila ang kanilang mga graduates sa pagsisimula ng kanilang mga careers. Oh, and with that, mukhang handang-handa ng FEU Tamaraos na makisali sa ating diskusyon. Kaya naman, FEU Diliman, welcome to... Schoolmates! Yay! Schoolmates! Schoolmates!
mga schoolmates! Katulad nga ng napanood natin kanina, tayo ay nasa FEU Diliman. Diliman. At talaga namang napakainit ng pagtanggap nyo sa amin. Maraming maraming salamat po. At uh, para mas maging exciting pa ang ating gabi, dalawang grupo po ang yes. magkaharap mamaya para po mag-talakayan. Isa na namang mainit na talakayan ang mangyayari mamaya sa kanilang mga opinion. Yes. Okay. At tama yan, Nico. Pero syempre, hindi magpapatalong ating schoolmates sa ating audience kasi mamaya may chance din silang sumali sa ating talakayan. Mamaya. Ready na ba sila? Tingnan nga natin, guys. Ready na ba kayo? Yes! Ayan, at ready, ready na sila. At sobrang exciting na talaga dito sa auditorium. At para sa mga schoolmates natin na nanonood sa TV at via live stream, live stream pwedeng pwede po kayo sumali sa aming live discussion. Just like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter dahil mamaya ilan sa inyong mga komento ang aming babasahin. Tama yan, JB. Ano nga ba ang trending issue na tatalakayin natin ngayon? Panuorin po natin to. Bakit pa ang dami ng ayos sa ating slow? Iho, ilang sa mga provision ng RH Law ay labag sa utos ng Diyos. Iho, kailangan natin ng RH Law dahil lumalaki na ang ating populasyon. Ha? Kailangan natin magbawas. Mapanood pa naman tayo sa buong mundo. <laughs> eh, bakit ang dami pa rin kumukukul sa divorce? Iho, ang pinagsama ng Diyos ay hindi pwede yung paghiwalayan ng tao. Alam mo, Iho, kailangan ni pagbigyan natin yung mag-asawa na yan. Buhay naman nila yan eh. Huwag na tayong makiinam. Gusto mo, bigyan na lang kita ng cellphone. Nagka <laughs> lang kayo nila. Ang dami yung sasat eh. Ang dami nagugulahan tuloy ako na ano. Meron pa kayong mga pasilbahan dyan. Meron pa kayong mga pag-gobyerno. Bibigyan mo pa akong cellphone. <laughs> Hindi na lang natin ito pag sa schoolmates, di ba? Mas maganda yon. Kayo mga schoolmates, pabor ba kayo na paghiwalayin ang simbahan at ang gobyerno? Ha? 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 Ayan nga, Hesa, no? Yes! Ang topic natin for tonight ay ang simbahan at pamahalaan. Ako, isang uh, napaka-kontrobersyal na issue nito na hindi nga ba dapat makialam ang pamahalaan sa issue ng simbahan o vice versa? Tama yan, Nico. And also, this is a very critical issue, di ba? Kasi nga, the Philippines is known as a Catholic country. So, posible ba maging separate ang church and state? Naku, napakahabang uh, usapin na ito, no? Talagang uh, kontrobersyal at napakasensitibo. At sino ba ang makakasama natin? Kilalanin na natin ang uh, mga makakasama natin, Hesa. Alright, ang unang grupo natin for today, sila ang pabor na separate ang church and state from each other. Let us all welcome Vernil, Christopher, and Ina! At ito naman ang grupo na nagsasabing dapat magkasama ang pamahalaan at ang simbahan. Kilala na natin sila. Narito na sina Maha, Brian, and Lorraine. At maliban nga sa ating debating teams, ay may chance din sumaling ating mga schoolmates sa audience na kasama ngayon si JV! Yes! Woo! Ramdam na ramdam ko ng excitement nila dito. Diba fellow Tamaraos? Ayun, nasa lang accountancy? Nasa lang marketing? Nasa lang FM? Nasa lang IT? Nasa lang mga FEU Diliman! Woo! Ayan, and obviously, handang-handa na ang FEU Diliman to share their thoughts dito sa usapin kung dapat nga bang makialam ang simbahan sa isyong politikal. Kaya balik muna dyan, Miko and Hesa. Maraming maraming salamat, JV. Iba talaga ang energy ni JV. Sa amin pong pagbabalik, sisimula na po natin ang mainit na talakayan. Dito lang yan sa... Schoolmates! May pakialam ka!
kilala na natin kung sino-sino ang ating mga debating teams dito sa FEU Diliman. Sila ang magsashare na kanilang opinions with the issue regarding separation of church and state. And for this segment, bibigyan natin sila ng tag-iisang minuto at dalawang minuto naman para sa kanilang team leaders. So simulan natin ang debate. Simulan natin, syempre, unahin natin ang mga pabor na dapat magkasama ang pamahalaan at ang simbahan. All right. Maha, what can you say? Your thoughts? Let's think about the Philippines as a man. Preferably, preferably of course, a Filipino man. Ngayon, ano bang importante sa isang tao? Kung papapiliin tayo ng vital organs, ano yun? Yun ang magiging brain at heart. Ito magsisilbing pamahalaan at tsaka simbahan. Ngayon, kaya natin kinonek ang brain natin sa pamahalaan. Kasi ito yung command center. Ito yung nagbibigay ng decision. Ito yung final say. Habang ang puso naman, siyempre sa story, sasabihin ito yung morals, yung values. Ngayon, most often than not, sasabihin nila, mas importante ang pamahalaan, ang brain. Bakit? Ito mas physically gumagalaw eh. Pero ang puso, sasabihin nila hindi. Anatomically, oo. Mas nakikita natin itong gumagalaw. Pero ang puso kasi, taga-beat lang, taga-pump ng blood. Pero, bakit natin iti-disregard ang isang vital organ? but hindi natin gamitin ang dalawa? Ito yung importante sa atin eh. Without any of these, mamamatay tayo. These are both vital to us. And the thing is, here in, our, in the Philippines, we already know that it's already a Catholic country. We're, we're known to be that. 86% of our pop population are consisted of Catholic believers. Sa England, si Queen Elizabeth II, pinoclaim niya ang England bilang Christian. Not Christian Catholic, but Anglo-Saxon. Ngayon, marami na protesta. Paano yan? Paano yung ibang belief ng iba? Hindi ba marerespeto yun? No, there was a law concerning human rights na anyone can freely praise their belief. They can worship any god they want. As long as lahat contained. Just like how we are right now in the Philippines. We have different kinds of beliefs, but as long as we know our limits, okay yun. Okay, right, maraming maraming you. salamat, Maha, para sa kanya. Konektado talaga ang simbahan at pamahalaan at talagang ihinambing pa niya sa human anatomy. No? Oo, sabi nga niya, no, Miko, that the brain is connected sa pamahalaan kasi that's the command center. Yung Tama. pa yung sinabi ni Maha. Alright, okay. ano naman sasabi ni Vernil tungkol dito? Well said, Miss Maha. So, the recent conflict between the two powers, the state and the church, leave opinions asunder. Ito ba kung isipin natin, paghihiwalayin ba natin sila o pagsamahin natin sila? Article 2, Section 5, I mean Section 6 of the Philippine 1987 Constitution states that, and I quote, The separation of the church and the state should be inviolable, end of quote. Yung particular article na yan is madalas ma-misconcept na ipaghihiwalay totally yung dalawang parties, which is the church and the state. What the Constitution says about that particular scenario is that, first, non-establishment clause of a national religion. Second, non-partiality or yung non, hindi magiging bias yung ating pamalaan sa mga religion. And third, will be the freedom of freedom. everyone to choose their religion. Then, kung iisipin nyo, medyo mag basis ko is the Constitution. However, I'm a church person myself and I believe its teachings. As a matter of fact, may baon akong Bible verse sa inyo. Under Mark chapter 12, verse 17, which states that, and I quote, Render unto Caesar what is Caesar's, and to God what is God's, unquote. Government mixed with a religion shatters the presumption na lahat tayo ginawa ng Diyos ng pantay-pantay. Kasi, since may pinaburan kang relihiyon, yung ibang relihiyon na hindi kasama doon is hindi na sila kapantay nung pinaburan mo. Moreover, in this case, I will recapitalize my position on this discussion. The church and the state should be separated. Right, thank you so much. All right, so this is sabi ni Vernil, no, na in our constitution, we have freedom to choose our own religion. Tama, at saka sinabi rin niya na, na talakan niya yung uh, pagpapantay-pantay yes. ano, uh, sa relihiyon. Okay, ano naman ang right. masasabi mo doon, Brian? All right, so question ko lang is hanggang saan at hanggang kailan natin hahayaan na magkahiwalay yung state 
and religion dito sa Philippines. Where in fact, pag pinag-isa natin yun, we are actually bound to be unified or we can actually progress as a country as one. We already saw this once before, 1986, I believe, people power. And during that time, nakita natin kung gano'ng kalakas yung Pilipinas when we are unified. Now, nakita natin siya once, why not do it again? Bakit hindi natin ulitin yung unity na nakita sa atin ng buong mundo? Now, lumaki tayo um, growing up, kilalang kilala ang mga Pilipino sa ang mga bagay. Pagpapo, pag-oopo, pagmamano po, pagiging takot sa Diyos, pagiging makapamilya. These are the things na alam natin na hindi naman tinuro sa atin ng education eh. Ito yung dinala sa atin ng pananampalataya natin sa Diyos. And we have a lot of things that we owe to the church. And isa na rito yung democracy natin. Let's not forget, our democracy was because of church. Maram. The church. All right. Thank, Thank you, you so, so much, much Brian. Brian. Kanina nabanggit nga niya, yun ang nangyari sa people power. No? Nagalo nga naman, may mga spiritual leaders doon. Marami mga leaders ng pamalaan. Nag-unite. Unity ang uh, gusto palabasin. At sabi nga na, nagawa na natin before. So yeah. why not be unified ulit? Diba? Tama. All right. Ano masasabi na natin si Christopher dito? Um, as we all know, both the church and the state are major institutions influencing Filipino people. But we should bear in mind that they are distinct and separate from that of each other. They have separate duties and responsibilities na ma magagawa lang kung magkahiwalay sila at hindi magkasama. Nagkakaroon ng conflict once na ang pamamahala ay ibibigay sa iisang panig lamang. Um, based on our history, way back um, 333 years ago where we were under the Spanish colonization, mismong may government pero um, the decision of the church still subsists as to as to politics as to governmental issues where in fact the government should govern on that place and makikita natin na nawawala ng karapatan yung tao so mismong church na din mismo mga pari na din yung gumawa ng paraan they want secularization or the transfer of ownership from the religion religious organization into the state. All That's right. all. Thank you. Thank you so much, Christopher. Para naman all right. Christopher. So, sinasabi niya, separate duties daw ang church and state. Hindi daw pwede pag sumahin dahil magkakulo. Kasi magkakakonflict. Hinambing pa nung Spanish uh, yes. times nga natin, no, na sinasabi niya na dapat ang mamuno daw doon ay ang pamaalaan, oh, oh. hindi ang simbahan. Oh, no? oh. Okay, all so right. ano naman masasabi dyan ni Lorraine? Um, the church and state are two sectors that are inseparable basically because they concern the same subject matter. And our upbringing here as an individual is influenced by our beliefs. It is what's shaping our decision in life and judgment also. Um, as an individual to be born, whether what, whether what church or what religion, it is our stigma that we live in accordance to what we believe. And as for our country to survive, we must have a strong and solid foundation. And what is that foundation? The church. Simply because the church teaches us morality and holds the absolute truth standard. And uh, in our country, there is a massive influ influence of our church that no law can strip from us. Basically because it is what we are, regardless of what beliefs we have. And... Um, perfect example of this influence is the people power. And also, uh, it before the church runs our country. All right. All right. Thank you so much, Lorraine. Para oh, de ba? Eh, ke Lorraine, no? Ang sinasa... So, napaka-strong foundation daw yung church. Dapat yan ang pundasyon oh, talaga oh. na kikilalanin din. Tama. All right. Ano masasabi ni Ina tungkol dito? Um, let me just point out that there are instances wherein people can so blindly follow their religion that they are that they are willing to deny other people of their constitutional rights. And let me remind you of the times when of religions past wherein they they brought harm to us. Political political domination, which the Philippines is is very fond of, um, racism, their slavery. 
the genocide which was brought by the by Adolf Hitler when when the church and state were actually together when pe mil millions millions of people died and there's also misogyny homophobia pedophilia and a lot more all right thank you so much ina oh no mga panahon daw ni hitler no? during hitler times pa oo oh, oh, wow. eh pag pinagsama ang simbahan at saka ang uh, oh, oh. pamahalaan ay eh, maraming mga nangyayari mga krumal and so many people have dun. suffered and died during those times all right, right. thank you so much for that okay. all right narinig na natin kung ano masasabi ng ating mga schoolmates natin dito kausapin naman natin ang mga schoolmates na kasama ngayon ni jv jv kamusta naman diyan yes thank you hesa alam mo Bagyan, we would like to acknowledge the presence of all the faculty members na nandito ngayon at syempre, ang lahat ng estudyante ng FEU Diliman! Ayun! Alam mo, Miko Hesa, napakarami ng tao ang gusto mag-opinion dito. Sino gusto mauna? Ayan, si Kuya. Halika dito. Ay, anong pangalan mo, Kuya? Kazu. Kazu, ganda ng name mo. Anong course mo? Marketing. Wow! Wow! Nasa lang marketing! Ayun! Kazu, anong question mo? Um, is it important for our government, specifically in our legislative sector, that um, for them to hear and consider the opinion of our church, uh, especially when making laws and passing bills? Um, uh, pwede na ditong ipasok yung paggawa ng RH bill. Kailangan na bang i-consider yung opinion ng church? Brian, go. Okay, um, so the thing here is, for that question, yung RH bill, the reason why the, gov the church is actually opposing this particular law is not just because it's against their teachings, but also because yung budget na ya-alat for the reproductive health, pills, condoms, and whatnot, will actually be taken from the primary needs, like education, what traffic. So those are the things na kung kaya mo namang i-prioritize yung education. And I do believe na kapag ang tao is well-educated, these things won't be needed. Right? So if for that question, yes, I do believe it's necessary for us to check with the church or to ask the church what will be their stand for, their, for, for, the, for the said law. Yeah. Are you good? Okay. Thank you, Kazu. Sino pa ang gusto magtanong dyan? Sino pa? Ayun. Medyo malayo si Kuya. Travel, travel. Hello. Ayan. Naligan dito, Kuya. Anong name mo? Kodi ko ka pa. Anong name mo, Kuya? Kinakabahan ka? Huwag kang kabahan. Ito naman. Anong name mo? Angelo po. Angelo. Anong masasabi mo sa comment na... Anong comment mo sa ating issue for today? Uh, uh, naniniwala ba kayo na may nakakataas sa estado o simbahan o equal lang. Siguro, sila naman ang pasagutin ah, okay. natin. Equal yes, ba yun. ang church and state? Or may mas mataas pa sa kanilang dola? Or equal ba sila? Oh, equal. Oh, para ano sa tingin mo? Go ahead, Christopher. Like I said earlier, um, may distinct and separate duties and responsibilities. Ibig sabihin, what, what power was given to the state is somehow the same as the power given to the church. Yun nga lang, magkaiba ng, ng parang basic applications. Pero, it governs morality. Kasi yun naman yung pinaka-basis ng law. Morality. And we as a nation should know what is right and what is wrong. Kaya equal lang po para sa akin yung church and state. All right, Thank you for Christopher. So para sa kanya, equal daw ang church and state. All right, JV, go ahead. Thank you, Hesa. Alam mo kung nagiinit dito sa FU Diliman, nagiinit din ang ating social media account. Katulad nito, may nakita ako dito sa ating Facebook. Eh. Galing kay Pete Deliva. Mahirap paghiwalayin ang estado at simbahan. Dahil ang simbahan ay bahagi na ng estado at ang lahat ng nasa isang bansa ay liable sa lahat ng legalities. Ayon naman kay Dante B. Balingit, ang simbahan ay hindi pwedeng manghimasok sa pamahalaan. Pero ang mga tao na nasa simbahan ay pwedeng makialam dahil ang bawat Pilipino ay may karapatan na makialam sa bawat desisyon ng gobyerno. Patuloy na kayo na magpadala ng inyong mga komento sa ating Facebook and Twitter account. Kaya balik muna dyan. Miko and Hesa! <laughs> Alright, JV! Thank you very much and thank you sa mga schoolmates sa inyong mga comments. 
stay with us dito lamang sa Schoolmates! May pakialam ka! still watching Schoolmates. Yes, Nico. Uh, this time, Mesa, ay uh, bibigyan naman natin sila ng pagkakataon para naman ibigay ang kanilang mga rebuttals. Alright, let's begin. Okay, so simulan na natin. Eto na. Dapat nga ba na makiilam ang uh, pamahalaan sa mga issue ng uh, simbahan, simbahan or vice versa? Okay, simulan natin sa iyo, Maha. Yes. Yes, dapat makiilam. yung kung sino man sa kanila ang may issue sa isa't isa. Kasi first and foremost, bakit nga ba tayo may loss? Bakit tayo may batas? Dahil yon para sa ikabubuti ng mga tao. Yun lang naman na pinapromote ng church eh. And of course, we're all celebrating humanity and our creator. So kailangan natin ipromote na lahat, hindi dapat tayo maging close-minded. Kailangan maging broad tayo sa pag-iisip. Hindi lang sa one side tayo. Let's look at the issue at both sides. We can't just look at the issue as it is because there's always a deeper meaning in it. And we have to solve it in that way. Okay, right. so uh, si, kay, kay Maha, dapat eh, parehas pa rin talaga ang ano, ang uh, dapat equal. equal pa rin sa kanya. Alright. Ano masasabi niyo sa comment ni Maha? Go ahead, Vernia. Well, of course, hindi kami agree doon kasi first and foremost, Philippines is a functioning, functioning democracy. And a functioning democracy should not and cannot have the sway of a religion to a particular par, of a particular religion as to not to prejudice peoples of other faith or of no faith. That's all. Okay. Kay Vernil naman, ang tinatouch naman niya ay democracy. Dapat daw, hindi na didiktahan ng ating... Parang hindi yung makibagay daw kung may oh. democracy ang religion. May comment ba kayo sa sinabi ni Vernil? Sige, All right, Maha. go ahead, Maha. Um, knowing Philippines right now, we're a big believers of Christ. 86% of our population are Christians already. How can you say na ang mga ngayalam lang ay yung mga political minds when in fact lahat tayo, per, lahat tayo, meron na tayong thought na morality and values that we learn from the church. We can't avoid that. Lahat tayo, pina, lahat tayo galing sa... upbringing na dapat sumunod tayo sa good news, sa good ways na pinatupad na galing sa family natin na itinuro sa atin ng church. Oh, so meron right. naman daw tayong moralidad. Hindi lang naman daw ang, ano, ang uh, pamahalaan ang kailangan lang sundin ang sundin. And also sabi niya 86% are Christians. So why not the church and the state be unified? Diba? Kung 86% ng population ganun. Tama. Oh, right? Ano masabi niyo dyan? Go ahead, Ina. Um, Ayun nga kasi 86% are Christians. And what about the remain, remaining 24%? So, Siyempre may ignore sila. And kaya nga, kaya na separate ang church and state. Kasi talaga magkakaroon ng pagkakaiba. Nag, you're free to practice your religious beliefs. But you are not free to impose your beliefs onto others. Oh, oh papano naman do yung 24%? I do believe na ano oh, na 14%. 14%, 24 tuloy. <laughs> oh, I do believe na ano, we have different beliefs. Pero hindi ibig sabihin no, na nakakaapa ka na ibang religion just because yung iba yung name nyo, iisa lang kayo na pinaniniwalaan and I believe that's the supreme being. So, hindi magkakaroon ng, ng parang discrimination when it comes to other religion. Okay, may sasabihin ka? Go ahead. Um... difference kasi ng laws and ng law from God or other beings. Ano, sa law is you can, you can revise the law but you strictly have to follow the laws of God. And kapag meron nga ibang religion, di ba? What if biglang ano, para strictly follow, bawal na biglang nagkaroon ng ano, ng meat. Bawal na kumain ng meat, bilang in stop yon yung industry na uh, meat industry. Siyempre, babagsak yung ekonomiya. And siyempre, may mga magrarali kahit, 
Kasi kapag inompose mo lahat ng religions na yon, magkakagulo-gulo lang tayo. Okay, ang question ko, ano nga ba ang pinagkaiba ng law ng simbahan sa law ng pamahalaan? Ah, Meron that's a good question. Ito? Well, for me, ang law ng simbahan will obviously be in favor of humanity. Regardless, lagi lang tayong for progression. Okay? Um, never nilang inisip, never sila nagsabi ng isang bagay na makakasama sa sa mga mayang Pilipino. And let's just talk about here in the Philippines. Here, sa church natin, lagi namang for prosperity, lagi namang for righteousness. Eh. There has never been a point in where pinamote natin yung killing. And those are the standard you know, ethics that will not change regardless of what situation arises. So I do believe na okay lang na hindi magbago yung, yung teachings ng church because I do... I think na hindi naman magkakaroon ng situation in the future na kailangang baliin yung mga utos ng Diyos. Like, okay na, sige. Okay na pumatay ng tao kasi overpopulated na tayo. I don't think it will happen and I don't think it's right. Okay. Alright. Huh? So, wala naman palang issue, guys. Oh, ang, ang, ang pamahalaan ba, iba sa sinasabi niya, dahil ang sabi niya kanina, ang sa simbahan, humanity ang promote eh. Sa pamahalaan ba, ano ba? As per definition of the law, Law is a rule of conduct which is just and obligatory, promulgated by legitimate authority for the benefit of the society. So, dun sa meaning na yon, exactly, parehong-pareho lang din. Um, siguro nagkakarula ng pagkakaiba kasi yung law natin based, based sa, yun nga, legality purposes and yung law of God is based on morality. But technically, all laws applying to, to the world to the special two Filipinos are all for morality of Filipino, which is that we need to know what is right and what is wrong. All right. Thank you so much, Christopher. Alam mo, Miko, may tanong ako regarding hmm. social issues. Yung nangyari lang lately. May issue to call sa INC. Yeah, oh. Yes, di ba? Alam na natin yun yung nangyari sa ESA. May ESA. nagsampan ng uh, isang ministro laban sa isang namumuno yes. sa INC. Oo. So, tanongin nga natin mga schoolmates natin, ano yung mga opinion nila tungkol sa issue na ito? Kasi may ipitan na uh, ang pinapaburan daw ng DOJ, yung yes. isang miyembro na nagkakaso sa INC. Ano masasabi niyo doon? Go ahead, Brian. Right. So, yung kwento kasi ng INC is first, Bawal sila magkasuhan kapag members sila ng church nila. This is upon research. And the thing here is, yung nagkaso or yung nag-file ng case is no longer a member of that church. And since may case na, since may case na, umabot na siya sa DOJ at kailangan ng pasukan ng DOJ at gampanan ng DOJ ang kanilang tungkulin. So I don't think that it's actually a question regarding it should be separated or it should not be separated because at that point in time, the government was only doing its duty. And if we actually do think na kapag unified na ang state and church, wala na tayong magiging ganitong issue in the future. Why? Kasi magkakaroon na tayo ng mutual talks o ano ba talaga, ano yung pwede yung pasukan, ano yung pwede nating separate from you guys. Those are the things na kailangan natin, uh, kailangan natin pagtuunan ng pansin and kailangan magkaroon ng clear cut ano ba talaga tayo as a country. We have to unify. In order for us to progress, I will state my point again, we have to be unified. Alright. Thank you, Brian. So, Miko, para kay Brian, it is not an issue. Kahit nangyari yun, it, they could still be unified naman yeah, daw. At saka, individual lang naman yung kinasuhan. Hindi naman dinadamay daw yung uh, buong, buong iglesia. Yes. Ano naman masasabi niyo doon, uh, Christopher? Uh, with guys. respect doon nga sa issue sa INC, um, siguro yung kinasuhan is should wait for the final verdict. Kumbaga, um, it is unjust. It is just na hintayin niya yung due process bago kung ano man yung mangyari. And siguro, Doon sa kinasuhan, um, kailangan is um, he knows how to accept yung decision kasi for the benefit na din naman yun nung iba. Yun po. Okay, thank you so much, Christopher. At meron pa tayong questions sa ating mga schoolmates dyan. JB, ano JB. yung question nila? Yes, thank you, Hesa. Sino bang gusto magtala yun? Ito kay Kuya. Hika dito. Hika dito, Kuya. Ah. Ano pang alam ni Kuya? Timothy. Timothy. From what course, Timothy? Marketing. 
Ah, uh, marketing. Nasaan mo nga marketing? So, anong question mo sa ating ano, issue for today? Uh, regarding sa separation of, uh, approval of separation of church. What if kung ma-approve nga yun, what, anong mga plano ng church na maka-improve sa e- economy ng Philippines? Could you cite some instances? So, the plans of the church to improve the Philippines doesn't aim directly on businesses, on economic status. Rather, it aims to preserve cultural values. That's it. That's what we lack most. We see these kinds of first modern countries, and I'm not going to name them anymore. We all know what our first modern countries are. But do we see them at peace? Do we see them united? No. That's because they lack. They already separated their church and the government. Ako, may, may, may follow-up lang ha. Total na, na tanong mo yung uh, kung ano ba yung matutulong, matutulong. sa ekonomiya. Mm. Ang simbahan ay hindi nagbabayad ng tax. Hindi sila pinagbabayad ng tax. Anong mm. masasabi nyo naman doon? Church were given special tax privileges po kasi. And siguro um, for the improvement of the culture, the traditions of Filipinos, technically dun papasok yung church. And for economic basis, um, siguro hindi sila tinataksan kasi for for the good and benefit naman po of the people. Alright. Alright. Back to you, JV. Thank you, thank you, Kuya. Alam mo, kung mainit na dyan, mas mainit dito. Sino pang mag-ano? Mag-question dyan. Ito, Kuya. Hi, what's your name? Uh, Igor. From what course, si Igor? Uh, marketing. <laughs> Madaming tanong ang ating mga taga-marketing. So, anong question mo sa ating mga debaters? So, yung question ko is for the black team. So, kahit sino, pwede sumagot sa kanila. Uh, bale, going back to the first premise dun ni Miss Luna, Miss Luna. So, sinabi niya na uh, ang heart and uh, nirelate niya ang heart and brain as a church and state. Tama ba? So, dito, nagbe-base ka ng anatomical evidences or comparison. Kung tatanggalin natin ang heart, ay kung ang include lang natin, ang heart, pati ang brain natin. So kung pwede natin sabihin, tatanggalin natin yung liver mo, tanggalin natin yung kidney mo, yung blood mo, and lungs mo, which is pwede natin i-represent as different entities na nagsusupport sa government natin. And ibang parts ng country natin. So, ang tanong ko is, kailangan kailangan ba yung dalawa lang pagsasamahin natin or kailangan pa natin i-include yung ibang sectors? I think we do have to improve the other sectors because that's what makes our land, our people. We have to improve as one. Kaya nga, bakit natin binabali ang Pilipinas sa dalawa? That's our main concern. That's why we want to prove out na we have to unite. We have to unite because that's the answer para tayo mag-progress. Not just economically but what but where we lack most and that is morally thank you as sa ating mga debaters ito may nakita ko sa ating facebook account sabi ni Samantha Isabel R. Salazar agree ako kasi kung hindi mapapatupad ang separation of church and state maaaring magamit ang pananampalataya ng mga tao para sa para sa pang pangangkin ng kapangyarihan sa gobyerno for example Nung unang panahon ng Kastila. Sabi naman ni Romil Emperado, sa tingin ko, hindi sa isang institusyon lamang nakasalalay ang moral basis ng mga desisyon ng pamahalaan. Hindi ang simbahan ang may final say sa kung ano ang tama at mali. Diyos ang nagtatakda ng tama at mali, hindi ang simbahan. Patuloy na kayo ng magpadala ng inyong mga opinion sa ating social media account at magbabalik pa ang number one debate show ng bayan. Ito ang Schoolmates! May pakialam ka! namang napaka-init ng ating talakayan. So, no? yes. sa, Kamusta sa... naman yung experience mo, Miko? Naku, nakakaba pala, no? lalo na. Oh. Natutuwa naman ako dahil ang gagaling ng mga yes. debaters natin sa FEU Dilima. Palakpaka oh. naman Maraming natin sila. salamat po sa inyo. Alam mo, Miko, Hesa, hindi lang naman debaters ang magagaling eh. 
yung mga audience natin nandito, sobrang gagaling din, di ba? Oh, yeah. yeah. Final. Okay. So, uh, bigyan na natin sila ng uh, both teams ang pagkakataon to say their final statements. Yes, Miko. Go and ahead, we will Maha. start with Maha. Go ahead. In the Philippines, do we we see two kinds of people. There's the pro-state and there's the pro-religion. If we separate these two, wouldn't it clash more? Wouldn't it bring more wars? Because both of their sections will be protecting what they believe. Now, we may not be ahead of other countries, but look at Islamic countries. For example, um, Saudi Arabia. We see that they only have one religion that signifies them. And of course, that's Islam. Now, if we, the Philippines, turn to become a national religion, we will be united more. Why? Because we will get, we will have all those morals that we learned as one. We were not going to separate. And according to other people, they find that, hey, what about the other religions? Ano namang masasabi nila? It's not a problem. Kasi lahat naman tayo, iisa lang ang goal eh. Lahat ng religion. And that's to celebrate humanity and our creator. Hindi siya issue. And last, I just wanna point this out. It's the people that is the issue. Hindi ang government or yung religion. It is in the interest of the people. The, gov the government takes charge of what the people want. If we follow the people want, Hindi lagi yun beneficiary. We should take note of our moralities, of our values, and we should always lean to what is right still. All right, thank you so much, Maha. Dito naman. Ano hey. naman sa ni Vernil? Vernil? Go ahead. We still believe that the separation of the church and state would help our country, Philippines, be enriched with it. Because a person who forgot history is condemned to repeat it. Look at how Roman Empire crumbled. Masyado naging involved yung religion nila sa pamumuno nung, eh, nung emperor nila, kaya nawalan sila ng power. Adolf Hitler, during the Holocaust, pinapatay lahat dahil may pinaniniwalaan sila na hindi pinaniniwalaan ng isa. And of course, our very infamous, what you call it, Spanish invasion. 333 years tayong pinakasakit, inalila, at sinakta ng mga Kastila. Hindi pa ba kayo natututo? That's all. Thank you. All right. Thank right. you so much, Vernil. Narinig na natin ang uh, last statements ng ating uh, both teams. Yes. Palapakan nyo naman sila. Ang gagaling nila. And this time, tayo naman. Our own opinion. Uh, ang ating naman mong opinion. Simulan mo, JV. Uh, ako, Mike Lilang. <laughs> Hindi ako pabor na pagsamahin ang simbahan at politics. Pero kung halimbawa ay magkaroon ng problema sa loob ng simbahan or issue, siguro for me, that's the time na kailangan na nating uh, manghimasok ang ating gobyerno sa simbahan para to help na ma-resolve ang issue, di ba? So neutral ka. Yes, neutral. Okay. Ikaw naman, Hesa. For me naman, naniniwala ako dapat may separation of church and state talaga. Okay, take for example sa United States. Mm. It's in the U.S. Constitution na separate talaga and every citizen is allowed to practice his or her own religion. Or alam nyo guys, minsan wala nga silang religion eh. Atheist sila. So that is their own right. So niniwala ako, as a human being, we deserve rights. Oh, di ba? Ang lalim nun. Alright, yes ah. <laughs> Alright, ikaw naman, Nico. Ano mo sasabi mo? Para sa akin naman, naniniwala ako na dapat pagsamahin ang pamahalaan at ang simbahan. Una-una, bakit? Ang pamahalaan, itinatag yan para mayroong kaayusan sa ating bayan. Ang simbahan, itinatag yan para sa ating moralidad, para tayo ay magkaroon ng konsensya. Ayan ay uh, kapwa itinaguyod ng Panginoon para tayo ay mag-prosper, para tayo ay mabuhay ng maayos, para maging maganda ang ating kinabukasan na mayroong pagmamahalan. Ayon nga sa Roma 13.1, tayo ay magpasakop sa ating uh, mga pinuno sa ating pamahalaan dahil walang pamahalaan na hindi ginawa ng Diyos. Oh, wow. So with at, that, at my uh, quote pa sa Bible. Yes. Memorize. Oh, yes. Yeah. Uh, so with that, maraming maraming salamat palakpakan niyo ulit. FEU Diliman. Yes, thank you. Sa lahat po ng mga nakikipag-participate na estudyante, faculty members, maraming maraming salamat at hindi pa tayo nagtatapos diyan dahil next week 
Nandito pa rin po kami para naman sa iba na namang mainit na talakayan. Kaya abangan nyo yan. Yes, next week naman guys. Ang issue natin is automation or manual election. Yan. Ayan, mainit din. Oh. Isang mainit na discussion na naman guys. Oo. Oh. Eh bukod din sa mga estudyante dito sa FEU din naman isang huling sigawan naman dyan mga Tama Raus. Ayun. Eh gusto rin namin magpasalamat sa mga schoolmates barkada namin na nakisali sa aming discussion sa social media. Maraming maraming salamat po. Alright, would you like to thank your sponsors, Miko? I would like to thank Gold's Gym and Ness Astilla Salon. Maraming maraming salamat po at abangan nyo po ang uh, pelikula na CQ. Malapit na po yan, directed by Ms. Uh, Director Joel Lamangan. Wow. Yeah. wow. Ano pa, nanonorin na natin mga schoolmates. All right. And I would like to thank L'Oreal Cosmetics for my hair. And abangan nyo rin, guys, ang Star Cinema Movie. Yeah. Starring me. <laughs> Nahiya pa. Um, etiquette for mistresses. Abangan nyo yung guys. Malapit na. Oh, Chris Aquino movie yan. Ayun. At syempre, gusto ko rin po magpasalamat kay Sir of Sir Mo of Magic Potion, maraming maraming salamat po. At itay ko na rin opportunity na to na i-invite kayo lahat mga fellow Tamaraos na manood ng pinakabago musical play ng taon, ang Hashtag Popular. Paano kong ginawa? Paano kong naging Pinoy si Kiko ng Philippine Stagers Foundation? Nagsimula na po yan this, come, this July hanggang March 2016. For more information, just like us on Facebook at Phil Stagers. Maraming maraming salamat po. Ha, speaking right. of social media, i-follow nyo po ako at Miko Aitona sa Instagram and on Twitter. Kayo guys. Yes. At uh, Hesa underscore Isabel sa Instagram. Ako, I am JV Cruz sa Instagram. Alright guys. And with that, sa bawat usapin, sa bawat issue, my bosses ang kabataan. Sumali, makinig at makaisa dahil opinion nyo'y mahalaga. Kaya naman, sabay-sabay natin isigaw sa buong mundo. Schoolmates, may pakialam ka! Isigaw ang tinig mo, ihayag sa buong mundo ang karapatan, ang karayaan. Buksan ang isip mo,